Hello, thank you all for joining me in studying A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the original edition, Lesson 20, here on January the 20th of 2023. I am determined to see. I am determined to see. Are we determined to see? Let's make that commitment that we want to see, be seers. <laughs> We have been quite casual about our practice periods thus far. There has been virtually no attempt to direct the time for undertaking them. Minimal effort has been required, and not even active cooperation and interest have been asked. This casual approach has been intentional and very carefully planned. We have not lost sight of the crucial importance of reversing of the reversal of your thinking. We have not lost sight of the crucial importance of the reversal of your thinking. The salvation of the world depends on it. Yet you will not see if you regard yourself as being coerced and if you give in to resentment and opposition. So we're not going to do this because we feel forced. We're going to do it because we want to. I'm determined to see because I want to. <laughs> This is our first attempt to introduce structure. Do not misconstrue it as an effort to exert force or pressure. You want salvation. You want to be happy. You want peace. You do not have them now because your mind is totally undisciplined and you cannot distinguish between joy and sorrow. Pleasure and pain, love and fear. Well, that's quite a statement that our minds are totally undisciplined to the point that we can't even tell the difference between joy and sorrow. Pleasure and pain, love and fear. The thing you thought was going to bring you love and, and pleasure and, and joy is actually the thing that brings you pain. So we're learning to tell the difference. That's why we want to be determined to see. You are now learning to tell them apart. Let's read that again. You want to be happy. You want peace. You do not have them now because your mind is totally undisciplined and you cannot distinguish between joy and sorrow, pleasure and pain, love and fear. You are now learning how to tell them apart and great indeed will be your reward. <laughs> Your decision to see is all that vision requires. What you want is yours. Do not mistake the little effort that is asked of you for a sign that our goal is of little worth. Can the salvation of the world be a trivial purpose? You know, I know that uh, some people think that if you don't pay something for something, you, you're not really getting anything of value. That's why transcendental meditation is, there's a price for it because if you pay something, you're probably going to, you know, pay more attention to it and actually consider it being worth something. At least you paid something to learn it. Well, we're not having to pay anything to learn this, but let's don't let that uh, make us think that it's of little value. Uh, what you want is yours. Do not mistake the little effort that is asked of you for a sign that our goal is of little worth. Can the salvation of the world be a trivial purpose? And can the world be saved if you are not? God has one Son, and He is the resurrection and the life. His will is done because all power is given Him in heaven and on earth. In your determination to see is vision given you. In your determination to see is vision given you. The exercises for today consist in reminding yourselves throughout the day that you want to see. Today's idea also tacitly implies the recognition that you do not see now. Therefore, as you repeat the idea, you are stating that you are determined to change your present state for a better one, and one you really want. Repeat today's idea slowly and positively, at least twice an hour today, attempting to do so every half hour. Do not be distressed if you forget to do so, but make a real effort to remember. The extra repetition should be applied to any situation, person, or event which upsets you. You can see them differently, and you will. 
What you desire, you will see. Such is the real law of cause and effect as it operates in the world. Wow, let's look at that again. What you desire, you will see. That's your prayer, your desire. And what you desire is what you're going to see. That's why we want to really get the feeling of what it's like to desire sight, vision. What you desire, you will see. Such is the real law of cause and effect as it operates in the world. So our lesson's fairly easy today. Just say those, what, five words, I am determined to see throughout the day. Say, you know, try to do it every, he says, try to do it a couple times an hour. I am determined to see, and don't be discouraged if you go several hours and don't forget. Just when you remember, do it again, and then try to make a real effort to remember to do it at the top of the hour and at the bottom of the hour. You might think of it that way. I, some years I even set my clock for going off every 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't think that's necessary. There's certainly nothing wrong with it. It might frustrate some folks around you. I never was able to get mine just to make a chime like the grandfather clock does. Uh, it, it wants to just go on and on, then I got to push the button to turn it off. So uh, if I had a little grandfather clock uh, app, I might actually, I've, and I've tried to do that, but I've not been very successful at it. Anyway, the main thing is just a, a desire to see causing you to say this little prayer. I am determined to see and reinforcing that desire. And look at that promise he says what you desire you will see such is the real law of cause and effect as it operates in the world we'll come back to that and i'll give you a little uh, tune to take with you let's go look at text reading perception versus knowledge we're in chapter three retraining the mind we're retraining the mind we're in section five perception versus knowledge while you're turning there, let me tell you a little bit about uh, apple bark tea. Tea made from apple bark is an old fashioned remedy. It is said to be tonic, relieves bili biliousness, which is nausea and vomiting, and intermittent fevers, helps in digestion also. Another note it says in there, it, too much stomach acid, eat sweet apples. Not enough stomach acid, eat sour apples. <laughs> uh, then also it says of the apple bark tea, it's good for dysentery, boils, insect stings, rabid dog bites, wow, and toothache. Okay, so that was some, some things that were used historically, uh, apple bark tea. So next time you're pruning your orchard and you have some apple branches, whittle off the bark and make some apple bark tea. You could probably make a tincture, too, and keep it all year long. Tree fruit. I wanted to tell you a little bit about, we're not reading about an apple today, but we're going to read about underneath an apple tree, uh, treefruit.wsu, probably Wisconsin State University at EDU. It says, orchard floor vegetation usually consists of perennial grass that form sod, weeds, and cover crops like legumes, um, legumes like white clover, that'd be Dutch white clover, a little short, little uh, four-leaf clover type of that, usually three-leaf, but you know what I'm talking about, a little short-growing clover that grows in your yard, not the tall uh, white clover, which you could put up there too, I suppose, but it takes a lot more sunlight and harder to walk in too, unless you kept it mowed. Legumes like white clover, vetch, and trefoil and some, are sometimes used. Typical grass is used in orchard, uh, drive rows, depending on location, include orchard grass, rye grass, bent grass, fescue, bluegrass, and timothy. And I found that, on, well, like I said, I was on tree fruit, W-S-U-E-D-U. -E that other one I wrote, read to you about the apple bark tea. Oh, I think, and you know, I don't know if I put down where I found that. Um, I think it was a medicinal herbal info.com I, I think I'm not exactly sure and I will put it in the description below where I found that information if I can find it again uh, frame uh, and then one more thing I wanted to tell you about on uh, and I found this on farmingmybackyard.com and it says other things you can use underneath uh, 
a, a, an orchard would be clover, uh, cucumber, hostas, and of course when you first set your uh, your trees out, there'll be a lot of sunlight, so you can grow different things throughout the year, and as they get more and more sunlight, you'll change what you're growing. Uh, but it says that cucumbers, hostas, uh, melons, nasturtiums, or, oregano, parsley, peanuts, pumpkins, rhubarb, salad vegetables, strawberries, sweet potatoes, and thyme are all good for in an orchard setting. Uh, permaculture orchard. I think I found uh, that one with. Okay, let's um, let's go take a look now in perception versus knowledge. We have been emphasizing perception and have said very little about cognition as yet because you are confused about the difference between them. The reason we have dealt so little with cognition is because you must get your perception straightened out before you can know anything. Otherwise, the distortion of what you're perceiving incorrectly is going to keep you so stirred up you'll never be able to know. So we got to get the perceptions calmed down and in line with truth as best we can before knowledge will um, open up to us. To know is to be certain. Like my teacher used to say, the best way to know something is to know. Is to know. <laughs> Uncertainty merely means that you do not know. Knowledge is power because it is certain, and certainty is strength. Perception is merely temporary. It is an attribute of the space-time belief and is therefore subject to fear or love. Misperceptions produce fear, and true perceptions produce love. Neither produce certainty, because all perception varies. That is why it is not knowledge. True perception is the basis for knowledge but knowing is the affirmation of truth. All your difficulties ultimately stem from the fact that you do not recognize or know yourselves, each other, or God. Wow, that's quite a statement. All your difficulties ultimately stem from the fact that you do not recognize or know yourselves, each other, or God. To recognize means to know again, implying that you knew before. You can see in many ways because perception involves different interpretations, and this means that it is not whole. The miracle is a way of perceiving, not of knowing. It is the right answer to a question, and you do not ask questions at all when you know, <laughs> because you know, you don't need to ask anymore. Questioning illusions is the first step in undoing them. The miracle or the right answer corrects them. Since perceptions change, their dependence is on time. Their dependence on time is obvious. Since perceptions change, their dependence on time is obvious. They are subject to transitory states, and this necessarily implies variability. How you perceive at any given time determines what you do, and action must occur in time. Knowledge is timeless because certainty is not questionable. You know when you have ceased to ask questions. <laughs> 33. The questioning mind perceives itself in time and therefore looks for future answers. The unquestioning mind is closed because it believes the future and present will be the same. Uh, two different ways of uh, not asking questions. One, because you know and you don't need to ask. The other, because you're uh, not wanting to know. Well, we want the first type where we, we, we don't ask. We want to get to the place where we're asking questions because we're trying to get our perception straightened out in time. But eventually we come to know and we don't need to ask the questions, not because we don't want to know, because we do know already, okay? The unquestioning mind is closed because it believes the future and present will be the same. This establishes an unchanged state of stasis. Oh, this establishes an unchanged state or stasis. It is usually an attempt to counteract an underlying fear that the future will be worse than the present. And this fear inhibits the tendency to question at all. 34, that's what I was referring to. 34. Visions are the natural perception of the spiritual eye, but they are still corrections. 
The spiritual eye is symbolic and therefore not a device for knowing. It is, however, a means of right perception, which brings it into the proper domain of the miracle. Right perception is the domain of the miracle. Properly speaking, a vision of God is a miracle rather than a revelation. The fact that perception is involved at all removes the experience from the realm of knowledge. That is why visions do not last. 35. The Bible instructs you to know yourself or be certain. Certainty is always of God. When you love someone, you have perceived him as he is, and this makes it possible for you to know him. Uh, when we will see him, we, he, we, shall be, he, we, we will be... We will be like him, for we will see him as he is. That's our first John. Also, uh, there's some other implied uh, to know yourself or be, uh, the Bible instructs you to know yourself or be certain. Well, that's a little harder one to find because it's implied in a number of verses, but not necessarily stated specifically. Uh, Matthew 5, 8, Ephesians 4, 13, and Proverbs 23, 7 all talk, you know, imply it, okay? Um, Socrates uh, talked about how that uh, uh, the one underlying statement that all philosophies would would um, lend to is know thyself. And uh, John Calvin, the great preacher of the 1800s, uh, basically said, if you're going to know yourself, you've got to know yourself in order to know God, and you've got to know God in order to know yourself. Uh, he was the founder of um, uh, Presbyterian Church. Uh, While you ask questions about God, you're clearly implying that you do not know him. Certainty does not require action. When you say that you are acting on the basis of knowledge, you're really confusing perception and cognition. Knowledge brings the mental strength for creative thinking, but not for right doing. Perception, miracles, and doing are closely related. Knowledge is the result of revelation and induces only thought. Perception involves the body even in its most spiritualized form. Knowledge comes from the altar within and is timeless because it is certain. To perceive the truth is not the same as knowing it. 36. If you attack error in one another, you will hurt yourself. You cannot recognize each other when you attack. Attack is always made on a stranger. You are making him a stranger by misperceiving him so that you cannot know him. It is because you have made him a stranger that you are afraid of him. Perceive him correctly so that you can know him. There's a good example of how perception has to be straightened out before you can know anything. Let's read it again. If you attack error in another, in one another, you will hurt yourself. You cannot recognize each other when you attack. Attack is always made on a stranger. You are making him a stranger by misperceiving him so that you cannot know him. It is because you have made him a stranger that you are afraid of him. Perceive him correctly so that you can know him. Right perception is necessary before God can communicate directly to his own altars, which he has established in his sons. There he can communicate his certainty, and his knowledge will bring peace without question. <laughs> In the last paragraph, 57, God is not a stranger to his sons, and his sons are not strangers to each other. God is not a stranger to his sons, and his sons are not strangers to each other. Whether you know them or not, they're not you're not a stranger, are you? Knowledge preceded both perception and time and ultimately will replace them. That is the real meaning of the biblical description of God as Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And you can find that in Revelations 22, 13. It also explains the quotation, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus said that in John 8, 58. Is it 58? Yeah. 
Perception can and must be stabilized, but knowledge is stable. Fear God and keep his commandments, as it says in Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Fear God and keep his commandments should read, Know God and accept his certainty. There are no strangers in his creation. To create as he created, you can create only what you know and accept as yours. God knows his children with perfect certainty. He created them by knowing them. He recognized them perfectly. When they do not recognize each other, they do not recognize him. Wow. Okay, well, we've got to get our, our perception straightened out so that we can begin to know again. <laughs> okay, well, and that's what we're doing here in this, uh, in this book. So our lesson today, I am determined to see which we're going to... Let's just, just recap what we're supposed to do today. The exercises for today consist in reminding yourselves throughout the day that you want to see. Today's idea also tacitly implies the recognition that you do not see now. Therefore, as you repeat the idea, you're stating that you are determined to change your present state for a better one and one you really want. Repeat today's idea slowly and positively at least twice an hour today, attempting to do so every half hour. It says at least. You can do it all day. You can do it way, way more than that if you want. Do not be distressed if you forget to do so, but make a real effort to remember. The extra repetition should be applied to any situation, person, or event which upsets you. To the person that's upsetting you, you can say to yourself silently, I'm determined to see. I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm going to get my perception straight so I can know again. You can see them differently, and you will. What you desire, you will see. Such is the real law of cause and effect as it operates in the world. I am determined to see. Okay, let's see how tuned I am here. Oh, looks like we're close enough, huh? determined to see I am 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 determined to see and great indeed will be our reward I am determined to see 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 and great indeed will be our reward I am determined to see I am determined to see. I am determined to see, and great indeed will be your reward, or our reward. I changed it. I am determined to see. Until tomorrow, say it often to yourself, every half hour if you can. But don't be upset if you don't. Don't feel pressured or forced. Just do it because you really want to let that prayer be the prayer of your heart. I am determined to see. Peace.